we know that God does not listen to sinners. Do you, do you understand that? That God does not, if you're in sin, God does not listen to you. But he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Go back. Again, it said uh, in verse 29, the Lord is far from the wicked. God does not hear the prayers of the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. All right, so if you want God to hear you, you got to be right. You got to do right. It's the word and none of that hate gonna work. Hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. Now I don't know what you heard. But don't believe anyone that can't show you the word. All right, Proverbs 15, going through the sayings of Solomon. Verse 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. A gentle answer turns away wrath. So if there's people going back and forth, a gentle answer, a gen that, that means you're not speaking with a harsh tone or angry. A gentle, a gentle answer turns away wrath. You know, so a wise, this is what a wise person would do. They'll turn away wrath by answering gently. A fool will just, you know, exp we're going to read. They'll just express their opinions. But a harsh word stirs up anger. That is why it's important not to speak harshly because guess what? You're going to stir up anger, <laughs> you know? And you can tell who's foolish by, by people who do that, that they stir up anger instead of saying, you know, what, let me respond gently. No, I'm going to respond like this. And it, it just causes, in the King James says, it stirs up strife. Verse two, the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge. You know, so a person, a person who's wise is known by their speech. You'll know that they're wise by the way they talk. But the mouth of, fool, of the fool gushes folly. <laughs> You know, the, a foolish person, when they talk, it's like their foolishness just comes out. It's like, oh my goodness, are they, are they this foolish? You, it just comes out like a, like a broken uh, water pipe. It's just gushing out their foolishness. That's how, and it's coming out. You, so you could tell somebody by what they speak, you know, in other words, that's what that verse is saying. Verse three, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. You know, they, they say uh, that in Santa Claus, saying, uh, making a list, checking it twice, he's going to find out who's naughty or nice. No, no, Santa Claus, Santa Claus is fake. But the Lord is keeping eyes on who's naughty or nice. You know, and that should, especially if you're a believer, you should be aware of that, that, wait a minute, if I sin, God sees this. And that's what the righteous fear, that they know God sees this. The wicked, they don't care. You know, so, but the righteous do care and they know that his eyes are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Verse four, the soothing or healing, the, the soothing tongue is a tree of life. So, so words have power, you know, you, your words can heal somebody. It is like a tree of life. It, it just revives somebody. Somebody was dying, withering, and it just brings them back to life. A soothing tongue is a tree of life. But a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. You know, somebody who has, who speaks negatively, who speaks death, who speaks, um, you know, things that don't build you up, it, cr it just crushes you. But the tongue of the wine, the, the soothing tongue or the healing tongue is a tree of life. It, it brings life. I mean, mommy just testified about that, about her, uh, her godfather. He's speaking death, his own tongue. But she's speaking life saying, you know what, believe and, and have faith and, and stop saying those things. So it's, now it's up to him who he's going to hear, the soothing, the soothing tongue or the perverse tongue. Verse 5, a fool spurns a parent's discipline. You can tell who's a foolish child by the way they act with their parents. When their parents tell them to do something, they roll their eyes, they talk back you know, they, they spurn, they, they hate the discipline, uh, especially of a godly parent. It's one thing if it's a wicked parent, you know, the wicked parents telling them to, uh, uh, lift, um, 30 pound rice up and down the stairs for two hours. That, that, that's understandable. It's not talking about that. A fool spurns their, their parents discipline in the sense that the parents tell them, look, you cannot wear that. And they're like, they spurn it and they, and they even explain it. Look, 
It's very inappropriate. It's very ungodly. It's very unprofessional. And they just spurn it. They, they, they hate their parents' discipline. But whoever heeds correction, talking about a child, but whoever heeds correction shows prudence. So that child who takes into consideration what their parents is trying to correct them in, they're a prudent child. They showing prudence. Verse six, the house of the righteous contains great treasure. Okay, that remember, last week we read about the house of the wicked and the tents of the righteous. It said that the house of the wicked will, will come to ruin, but the house of the right, the tent of the righteous shall flourish. But wait a minute, the wicked had a house and the righteous had a tent. It says that the house of the righteous contains great treasure. Now, what is it talking about? Like, oh, they got, they got gold chains and money laying. No, it's, the great treasure it's talking about is the wisdom. It is the blessing of God. There is great treasure. When you walk into a house of a righteous person, you could feel in that house the presence of God. You could feel a difference that there's light in there, not darkness. But the income of the wicked brings ruin, you know, because the, the, the way the wicked make money is through scheming and bribes and, you know, working, fudging numbers and being deceitful and, and, um, you know, extorting all that activity is going to destroy them. The law is going to get them. A person is going to be very upset and do something to them, beat them up or even kill them. They're going to be ruined. Even though they got that income by all those tactics, they're going to get ruined. Verse seven, the lips of the wise spread knowledge. Yeah. So if you're a wise person, you, you don't hold your knowledge to yourself. You spread it. You give it out. You know, somebody's going through something, you, you'll give them that knowledge and it's up to them if they want to you know, receive it or not. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, but the hearts of fools are not upright. You know, the hearts deep down a fool, they're not right. They don't want to do right. You know, they may even pretend that they want to do right. They don't want to do right. That's the heart of a fool. Verse eight. Now listen to this. It says this, the Lord detests the sacrifice of the wicked, but the prayer of the upright pleases them. Notice uh, the wicked man presents a, uh, an offering, a sacrifice, but the righteous, but the, the upright man just prays. And God says, you know what? I'd rather take his prayer that has, that he didn't buy anything or, or, you know, had to make an effort compared to the wicked who had to buy like a $30 lamb and then sacrifice it. Cause God knows the heart. God don't care about what you present to him. God cares about the heart. But God says that the, the sacrifice of the wicked, God detests it. It's an abomination. It's like, God's like, ugh. Now, now mind you, they made the effort. They, made, they put in the investment and yet God doesn't like it. But the humble prayer of the upright pleases them because they're doing the right thing. Verse uh, nine, the Lord detests the way of the wicked. God hates the way of the wicked. When people are doing wicked, God hates their way. God hates their path. But he loves those who pursue righteousness. God loves those that are pursuing. They might, they might be starting out, they might be starting out just coming out of sin, but because they're pursuing what's right, God loves those kind of people. So what are you gonna be? The one, the one walking the way of wickedness or one who says, you know what, I wanna pursue righteousness. I wanna know what's right because that's what I want to do. God will love you. God loves those people. Verse 10. Stern discipline awaits anyone who leaves the path. All right. There's, a, there's one path. There's one right, right path you got to walk in. But if you say, you know what? I'm not going to go down that path. I want to go down another path. Guess what? Stern discipline. You're going to get a rude awakening. You're going to get corrected really quick. Stern discipline awaits anyone who leaves the path. The one who hates correction will die. <laughs> it's not only that you're going to get discipline. If you keep it up, according to this verse, you're going to die if you hate correction. You don't want, you, you got it all figured out. You know where you're going. You know what you're doing. You don't want to hear it. Guess what? The one who hates correction 
well, you're gonna die. It reminds me of uh, somebody that you tell them, look, don't go to the ATM at two in the morning in a gas station in Pine Hills in a bad neighborhood because something bad might happen. And the person's like, nah, nah, I, that's that's you. Don't worry. I not. Guess what? Then they get mugged and and murdered, <laughs> getting that and money at two a.m. in the morning. The one who hates correction will die. All right, verse eleven. Death and destruction lie open before the Lord. How much more do human hearts? All right. So God knows about death and destruction. That's He allows it. You know, death and are are bef open lie open before the Lord. God sees when people are dying. You know, it's not like God's like unaware. But but how much more do the human hearts? God knows what's in your heart. <laughs> You can, you can fake everything and pretend, and but God knows it's in your heart. And that's scary because God knows the thoughts of our heart. That's something that no human being has the capability, but God does. So, you know, <laughs> you could play the role, play the part, but God knows your heart. And that's what God's going to judge you on, on Judgment Day. 12. Mockers resent correction. They, they hate correction. They don't want it. They avoid the, the Christians, you know, the true people that are living right for God, they avoid people like that. They, they hate correction. So they avoid the wise. They avoid people that, that are, um, you know, that are wise. They, <laughs> like I said, they, they'll, <laughs> they won't want to be your friend. They'll avoid you. So, you know, that's how they are. Verse 13, a happy heart makes a cheerful face. You know, if you're happy, it, it brings... You know, a happy heart. If your heart is happy, it'll, it'll just resonate in your face. But heartache crushes the spirit. You know, that, that's a truism, you know, that when you're in pain, it crushes your spirit. You know, when something bad happens, a death of a loved one, a loss of a job, or, you know, you lose uh, your house, it, it just devastates, it crushes your spirit. But it says a happy heart makes a face cheerful. So the thing is, if you encounter somebody that has a crushed spirit, just, just come with a, with a happy heart. And you know what? It'll make their face cheer up a little. You know, so when you see somebody um, downcast, you know, come at them with a happy heart. It'll make their face cheerful. Verse 14, the discerning heart seeks knowledge. You know, someone who's who, who understands, look, I got to figure this out. They'll seek knowledge. They'll say, you know what? I could play all day and goof off all day or, or sleep all day. But they're like, no, no, I have a discerning heart. I want knowledge. But the mouth of a fool feeds on folly. So a fool, a, they feed on folly, meaning they, they do things that are foolish. They watch shows that are foolish. You know, oh, the, some comedian, some vulgar comedian, that's all they are about, fool, foolish, fool, <laughs> foolishness, and they feed on it. They, they feed their souls with foolishness, but the wise, they seek knowledge, you know? So you, you got to ask yourself, what are, your, what are you feeding your soul? Because a lot of us say we're wise, but what are you feeding your soul? Because the fools, the mouth of a fool feeds on folly, but the discerning heart seeks knowledge. 15, all the days of, of the oppressed are wretched. All right. Now this has nothing to do if you're a fool or wise. It's 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 based on the situation anybody could be in. When you're in an oppressive, um, let's just say, um, like a government, an oppressive government, or you're in a, a marriage that's very oppressive, the days of the oppressed are wretched. Give me that verse in um, Ecclesiastes seven verse seven. In the King James, it says, surely oppression makes a wise man mad. So even a wise person, when they feel oppression, they could go crazy. <laughs> go back to um, Proverbs 15, what it said again, the, all the days of oppressed are wretched. You don't want to be under oppression. It, it, it stinks. You know, there have been throughout history, people living under oppressive governments in like in China, you know, I think of uh, Russia back in the Soviet Union. It was very oppressive. And those people are miserable. Kim Jong-un in North Korea, it, it's, it stinks. <laughs> the days of the press are wretched. You're like, oh man, I have to live under this maybe for the rest of my life. But the cheerful heart has a continual feast. 
Boy, if, if you have a happy heart, you're like happy all the time. People don't even understand your happiness. They, people think you are, you're crazy, you're always happy, but that's because you have a cheerful heart. You're, you're just thankful and, and you're just you know remembering your, of the goodness. So you gotta ask yourself, even if you're in a oppressed um, situation, if you have a cheerful heart, you're gonna be happy regardless, even if you're in that oppressive situation. 16, better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. In other words, better for you to have a little bit of things and be at peace with the fear of the Lord because you respect God. You're not, not, you're not like, oh, I want to get more money. Like the Bible says, the love of money is the root of all evil. No, you fear God. You say, you know what? I have a little, but I'm, I'm content. Better, better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. You know, there's a saying in the world that says more money, more problems. That's true. <laughs> the more money you get, more, more wealth you get, you're going to have turmoil. You know, so, <laughs> but it, better a little with the fear of the Lord than great wealth with turmoil. But in this case, talking about you got great wealth under bad circumstances. You know, you were like one of the, in, in those days, a tax collector and you were scheming people out of money and now people hate your guts. You don't want that kind of wealth. All right. Verse 17, better a small serving of vegetables with love than a fattened calf with hatred. In other words, is you ever uh, attended like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas celebration where your family and friends and there's people there that, and you don't, you don't like them and you know, it, it, there's just negative energy. There's toxic people. You don't want to, you know, you're there because you're supposed to be there. It's a custom to be there. But then again, you go to, um, you know, you, you, you invite a friend over and, and you just have a small meal, some lettuce, and, and you're just talking and there's peace. Better a small serving of vegetables with love than a fan calf with hatred. It is. It's true. You know, the, a lot of people, they get caught up in the big, uh, you know, celebration and everything. But a wise person, they prefer the peace of having somebody that they love and connecting and they're just eating a, a bowl of lettuce as compared to a big turkey and, and a, you know, salad and potato pies and people are arguing and debating and, you know, not talking to each other. You know, it's better to, you know, have a small serving of vegetables with love. 18, a hot tempered person stirs up conflict. <laughs> you know, somebody that just snaps. The, when they snap, guess what's going to happen? The other, other person is going to snap. You're causing conflict. That's what a hot-tempered person does. I mean, honestly, that's what happened this week in that meeting. Phil, Phil is very, uh, you know, uh, hot-tempered and everybody's just going berserk in the place. It caused conflict. But the one who is patient calms a quarrel. So if somebody is patient, they know they even know how to deal with somebody who's hot tempered. When the the quarrel's already happening, happening, a patient person knows how to tone it down, bring it down. That's what a, a patient person does. A wise person. Nineteen, the way of the sluggard is blocked with thorns. So in other words, a lazy person, they they're going down a path. And they always find a reason why it takes them for so long because there, there's things in the way. But the path of the upright is a highway. You know, the upright person, everything goes smooth. It's like they're going straight. It's like a highway with no traffic. They just woo. But the sluggard, oh, every is blocked with thorns. I, I, I would love to continue, but this thing is in the way. That's in my way. And they never get anywhere. But the, the upright, the path of the upright is like, a, like the Autobahn in Germany. You could go 100 miles an hour. They're just going straight. Verse 20, a wise son brings joy to his father. You know, it didn't say a rich son or a famous son. A wise, especially to a wise father. A wise son brings joy to his father. You know, they don't have to be rich or famous if they're wise the the father will rejoice say man you you are something you know you're amazing but a foolish man now he's talking about remember i said the 
the verse, this verse always uh, pertains to the verse before. But a foolish man or the foolish son despises his mother. The foolish son or the foolish daughter, they'll talk bad about their mom. And, and, and remember, in this case, talking about a wise mother, a godly mother, they'll badmouth their own mother just so because they, they're, 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 they're those that like to blame their situation on others. And they say, oh, it's my mom's fault. Look, the reason why I'm in this situation because, you know, uh, she uh, didn't hug me. You know, a foolish man despises, hates his own mother. That's how they are. So if you ever re hear or encounter somebody and they're always talking bad mouthing their parents and you know the parents were decent parents, maybe they may not have been perfect, nobody's perfect, but they try their best and they bad mouth them, it's because they're a fool. It's not because what they're saying is true, it's because they're a fool. Five, verse 21, folly brings joy to one who has no sense. <laughs> you know, foolish people, they love foolishness. They love it. You know, they, it brings them joy. You know, <laughs> you do stupid things instead of, you know, instead of saying, look, you're going down the wrong path. Like, yeah, man, you did that. Oh, you, <laughs> they, it reminds me of that verse in Romans one that not only do they do such things, but they also rejoice in them that do it. Folly brings joy to the one that has no sense, but whoever has understanding keeps a straight course. So in other words, if you have if you're wise, because a wise person has understanding, you'll stay on the, the narrow road. You won't go to the light, left hand or to the right. That's what a person of understanding does. They keep straight. They're not, not going to the left or right. Verse 22. Plans fail for a lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. All right. If, if you, if you want to plan something in your life, whether it's college, buying a car or a house, you should get as many counselors, people that have knowledge. So when you finally do it, it will succeed. Don't, don't go with one person who barely has no knowledge and think, oh, they know about cars because he has a car. No, you want many, many, not just one. You want many counselors because you want your plan to succeed. All right. But you gotta have many advisors. That's the thing. You, 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 whatever it is, whatever situation, try to get as much information from people as you can. Don't just hop into it. And you know, I thank God this, this in this age we have YouTube and the internet that you could get that information. But more so spiritually, you know, <laughs> for example, you're getting married or you're raising children. Plans fail for lack of counsel. You want to get as much counseling from a godly mother, a, you know, a husband. So you, so your marriage, you, you raising your children, your household will work. You know, so, but but they fail because you don't get nothing. You don't you don't see counsel. Twenty three. A person finds joy in giving an apt reply. You know, if if you give an answer to somebody. You know, let me keep it here. How good is a timely word? So somebody's going through stuff and you give them a, you know, they, they, they want an answer. They trying to figure out and you give them a, a right answer, a timely answer. It's, it's good. It just feels good because they were lost, but your word gave them a little hope. You know, a person finding finds joy in giving an apt reply and how good is a timely word. Now, I remember there was a coworker of mine that I was, me and mom were, you know, going back and forth, whatever. And she just said, don't, don't, don't. She said, don't do what is right. Wait, how it goes again? Wait, she said, uh, right. yeah, she said, don't be right, do right. That, that was a timely word. It was simple. I was like, yes, that's, that's, a, now I understand. That's a timely word. 24. The path of life leads upward for the prudent. So in other words, if you're doing, if you're a prudent person, you're going the right way. Everything's going to work out. You know, even if you don't see it, everything's going to work out. You're going like the Jeffersons. You're going to move on up. <laughs> you're going to, everything's going to get better and better. I mean, I, I could testify, you know, I, I grew up in the Bronx in a, in an apartment complex with, with broken windows and garbage and look at where I am now, you know, 
I'm better than that, you know, than, than, than where I started. It's not, I'm not going downwards. I could be in jail, locked up, murdered. So everything, the path of life leave upward for the prudent to keep them from going down to the realm of the dead. In other words, as you move on up and you're, and you're prudent, you see yourself moving up and you realize, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going to stay on this course because I'm going up. Why would I want to go back there? It, it keeps you it, to keep them from going down to the realm of death. You don't want to go back down. <laughs> Once you start going up, you don't want to go back. But that's what the prudent do. You know, that's what happens to the prudents because they're going up. Verse 25, five. <laughs> the Lord tears down the house of the proud. So if you're proud, God's going to tear your house down. And is he talking phys physically? God's going to like, maybe, but he also going to, you know, your marriage is going to go down. Your kid's going to hate you. The, the Lord tears down. You lose your house. The Lord tears out the house of the proud, but he sets the widow's boundary stones in place. Wow. Now remember in, in those times, a widow was very vulnerable. She had no protection. She had no guardian. She had no resources. And yet here it says that God sets up the wid widow's boundary stones in place. So her house is not going to be moved, but, but the house of the proud, God's going to tear, God himself is going to tear down that house. Verse uh, 26, the Lord detest the thoughts of the wicked. God, God, when, when a wicked person think God detests, is, is disgusting to them. God detests the thoughts of the wicked. But gracious words are pure in his sight. So if you speak words that are, are beautiful, that are lovely, that are encouraging, in, in God's eyes, it's, it's, it's great, it's pure. God looks at you and says, yes. But the thoughts of the wicked, God's like, oh my goodness, you're, you're disgusting. It, it, it's, it's disgusting to him. Verse 27, this, this, is, this is one you need to hear. <laughs> the greedy the greedy bring ruin to their households. You know, there's some people who are so greedy and they ruin households. You know, some a brother of yours, a cousin of yours, they're all about money and they manipulate you and then they get you involved in their schemes. They bring ruin to their households. You got to be aware of those people that are greedy in your households. Don't, don't be like, well, he's greedy, but he's my brother. He, he might bring you down. He might bring you down. But the one who hates bribes will live. So in other words, in other words people that don't want to get money un unjustly, they want to get money the right way, they will live. But avoid, like I said, avoid the greedy person because he'll bring ruin to your household. So avoid that kind of person. Verse 28, the heart of the righteous weighs his answers. So in other words, or in the King James Version, it says they study the answer. So in other words, when a righteous person, righteous person speaks, they think about what they're about to say. They don't just blur out or, you know, say what's in their mind, whatever's in their mind at that moment. They really consider what you're saying. They'll even ask questions just to make sure to understand what you're saying before they answer. The heart of the righteous weighs his answers, but the mouth of the wish, wicked gushes evil. So in other words, the wicked, they'll just react to what you say. They're not weighing your answer. They're not trying to figure out what you're saying. No, the minute you say something, they'll say, oh, so you're saying I'm stupid then. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they just gush out evil. They'll accuse you. They'll slander you. They're not really trying to figure out what you're saying. They're really just trying to gush out evil, trying to speak evil about you. That's That's what the... Or they just, you know, get angry and all that. That's what a wicked person does. The mouth of the wicked does that. But the heart of the righteous weighs his answer. They're really trying to understand. Verse 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. You know, I, you know I, sometimes I see videos and I, and I, and I see a, an evangelist tell an unbeliever, say, look, why don't you pray about by your situation? I'm like, wait a minute. God says that he's far from the wicked. The only prayer that God wants to hear from the wicked is, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. That's the only first prayer, but get that out of the way first. Give me um, John 9, 31. 
You know, this is what a, um, a man that was healed by Jesus when he was blind, this is what he said. And I read the ESV. We know that God does not listen to sinners. Do you, do you understand that? That God does not, if you're in sin, God does not listen to you. But he is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Go back. Again, it said uh, in verse 29, the Lord is far from the wicked. God does not hear the prayers of the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. All right. So if you want God to hear you, you got to be right. You got to do right. Verse 30, light in a messenger's eyes brings joy to the heart and good news brings health to the bones. Click on 30. Let me, let me go scroll down to the ESV maybe. Let's see. The light of the eyes rejoice the heart. The eyes of the eye. If, if you see somebody's eyes and, and they're happy, you know, they're content, it, 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 it somehow brings you up, you know. If somebody's miserable, they're miserable. You know, like, they, like that saying goes, misery loves company. But if you're around people that are full of light, their eyes are full of happiness and peace, it brings, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. It brings your, you know, it, it rejoices your heart also. And good news refreshes the bones. You know, so when you hear something good, you might have been downcast a little bit or, you know, just going through life. But when you hear something good, it, it just, it, it refreshes your bones. It like lifts you up, you know. So, yeah, it's just a truism. Go back. Verse um, 31. I think it's the last verse. Oh, no. Okay. Whoever heeds life-giving correction will be at home among the wise. So, if you, if you heed something that will that is the correction that will save you, it'll show that you're wise. You know, if you don't, then you're a fool. Life-giving correction, meaning there's, there's something that you're doing wrong that's going to destroy you. You know, you're, you're, you're drinking alcohol. You're, uh, um, <laughs> you know, being um, foolish. You're going out at, at two in the morning. You're, you're committing, a, you know, planning to commit adultery. Whoever heeds life-giving life correction will be at home with the wise. You are about to be destroyed, you know, but now you're at home with the wise. So, 32. Though, now here's the opposite. Those who disregard discipline despise themselves. So, in other words, if, you, if somebody's trying to correct you, you're not hurting them in the long run. You're hurting yourself. You know, if, especially if they show you in the, in the word, look, what you're doing is wrong. And you say, you know what? I'm not going to, I don't care. I, I, I love this person. Uh, I, I just want to go that way. I don't, I don't really care anymore. Guess what? You, you despise yourself. You're, you're hurting. You're going to hurt yourself. But the one who heeds correction gains understanding. So the one who gets that knowledge and then they apply it they understand. They're like, oh, okay, I get it. I, I was going down the wrong path, but now I'm going to heed your correction. Last verse. Wisdom, wisdom's instruction is to fear the Lord. That Throughout the book of Proverbs, the main thing that wisdom is trying to tell you is fear God, fear God, fear God. If you don't get any other message, fear God. That's what wisdom is trying to tell you. Wisdom's instruction is is to fear the Lord and humility comes before honor. You know, in other words, God will honor you, but you got to humble yourself. You, you got to, you got to go to a level where you're a servant where you're like, you know what? I'm doing it. I don't have my agenda. I'm not doing it for money. I'm not doing it for fame. I'm just doing it because I, I just want to do it. I just want to serve God. That kind of person, God will honor. You know, God, God himself, will honor. If, if not on earth, uh, in heaven, when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. But who, who did that honor go to? Those who have humility. You know, I, trust me, I know, I, I've even heard some preachers who became pastors boasting about, oh, when I get this certificate, I'm going to be here and I, you know. And I'm going to get this position. I'm going to have this church with four or 500 people. God's not going to honor that person. But God will humble. God will honor 
the humble, those that, that are doing it with no agenda. All right, so we'll stop there. Anybody has a question, observation, comment? No? All right. Let's uh, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Got a lot to pray for.